Hi, I'm Tim Bowd and I work here at Transtherm Cooling and today we're going to talk through the basics of what an adiabatic cooler is and how it works. But before we begin that, it's possibly easier to discuss what a dry cooler is and how that works. Because an adiabatic cooler really is just an adaptation of that. A dry air blast cooler is used for cooling water or water glycol fluids and the water passes through copper tubes going backwards and forwards within these heat exchange coils. The induced draft fans drag cool outdoor air through the coils. The energy from the water is then absorbed into the air. The air heats up, takes the heat away and is ejected through the axial fans off to atmosphere. Typically, a UK example, maybe on the south coast or in London, you might use a 35 degrees C dry bulb air temperature, at which point typically an air blast cooler can cool to around 38 degrees. Sometimes you can push it a little bit more and get a little bit lower. But generally, you're going to be around three degrees above your dry bulb temperature. If, however, you need to cool below that, we then need to start looking at an adiabatic cooler. Adiabatic coolers are capable of cooling below dry bulb conditions, and they do this by increasing the relative humidity of the air. So adiabatic coolers are typically good in moderate to warm climates with low to mid levels of humidity because they pre-cool the air by increasing the humidity before that air temperature is then passed through the coil. So for example, in the same 35 degrees C dry bulb example, um, we would be able to pre-cool the air down to circa 23 degrees in the UK. This then means that we could get water temperatures of around 26 degrees. In parts of the UK, or if we push the adiabatic system a little bit harder, we could be as low as 24 or 25 degrees. So these spray bars emit uh, a mist of water which is evaporated into the airstream, which gives it that pre-cooling effect of the air before it's dragged back through the coils. And in future videos, we'll talk more about how that works and how we've made that safe. And then if we walk to the back of the unit, there's the main adiabatic hub that we refer to as the adiabatic wet box. So a mains water connection is connected to the three quarter inch supply on our wet box. The mains water flows into a double check valve inside our wet box first to make sure that it can't flow back into the mains supply before it then gets put through a series of filters. Then really importantly, from a health and safety perspective, a UV sterilization system. And if you'd like to know more about that, please keep watching our videos because there'll be a separate section dedicated to the health and safety aspect of our adiabatic coolers before then finally going through a booster pump to make sure that the correct pressure is supplied to the spray nozzles to ensure we get the correct droplet sizes. In the next video, we'll be looking at different applications for adiabatic coolers. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to catch future videos, please subscribe. And we look forward to running through things in more detail with you. I'm Tim Bound from Transtherm Cooling. Thanks for watching.